Rabbi Jonathan Kahn and James Gall are the two best prophetic voices I know to understand what God is up to in the war between Hamas and Israel. Next. Welcome, Holy Spirit. I'm so glad you're here. One of my favorite scriptures at this moment in history, but I think between now and the return of the Messiah, is Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 and 2. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you, for darkness shall cover the earth. Deep. You know, that's, that's not just darkness. It's a deep, it's a thick darkness, the peoples. But, I love the but, but the Lord shall rise upon you, and His glory shall be seen upon you. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, uh, there was a prophetic mystery given the night before it all began, the war, that foretold what would happen and when. Yeah, Sid, uh, the last time we were together, we were opening up the newest book I wrote, which is the Josiah Manifesto. One of the mysteries in that book is called the 50-year mystery and or the Jubilee and mystery. And this mystery ordained that Israel would be attacked. It would be a mass ground invasion. It would catch Israel by surprise. It would take place in 2023. It would happen in the month of October. It would take place on a Sabbath. It would take place on a Hebrew holy day. It would lead to war. The attack would take place on the first Saturday of October of 2023. Now, now I'm sharing this the night before it happened. I'm sharing on Friday night at Beth Israel up here. Um, and I'm sharing, I'm led to share on this 50 year mystery and the, uh, from the Josiah Manifesto. And the thing is that very night when I'm sharing about the 50 year mystery or the Jubilee mystery, it is the 50 year anniversary of the Yom Kippur War, which involved a massive attack. It took Israel by surprise. It, it happened on a Hebrew holy day. It, it caused a war, it happened on the first uh, Sabbath of October. You see, you know, the first thing, and I, there's so much to it, but I'm just gonna say this, that we're looking and say, God, what's going on? It's all out of control. It's not out of control. Just know this, your God is still on the throne, the God of Israel. Okay, question for James Gall. Israel is the central timepiece concerning the vision for the Messiah's return. Yes, it is. What do you mean by that? Well, it's like God has a timepiece. And when Israel was brought back as a nation in 1948, the clock of God started ticking. And the sovereignty of God, the timepiece of God started ticking. And I totally agree with what Jonathan Kahn just presented. I, in a podcast, had just released a, a, a podcast about Israel, the pattern, the prophecy, and the call to prayer. And I had also just stated that about the 50 year, the Jubilee, and I had mentioned as well, watch out, there's a surprise. Even as there was the 50 year, the patterns, we are to be taken by surprise. But Israel is the centerpiece of God. Many of us, I'm Gentile, Jonathan is Jewish. What a combination you have brought together today. You know, I have this follow-up question for you, uh, uh, Jonathan. How does what's happening in Israel match up with what the Bible says about end times? Well, Sid, I came to the Lord because of end time prophecy. As an atheist, I could not argue with it. And, and the key, the first key about the end times is Israel, as, as James yes. said. 
that that you know you cannot have the end times with Israel not being back. God says it again right. and again. Even from Moses, he says it's the end times begin really when Israel is back. They're back in the land. Number two, they have to be back in Jerusalem. Well, that happened. Right. But the other thing is, it's got to be that the focus of the world has to be on Israel. You know, Israel, mm -hmm. size of New Jersey. You know, I'm still yeah. doing this from New Jersey. Tiny New Jersey. Yet, you know, there are little pauses, but it always goes back. It always keeps That's coming right. back to Israel. And when you think about how many news stories from 50 years ago are still news stories now, mm -hmm. none of them. The only one is Israel. And so not only that, but it's also, it, the Bible says that in the, in the last days, Israel will be the focus of world controversy. The, yes. the nations will rage, will fear, you know, it ends in Armageddon. It's hard to imagine that that could happen, you know, in the natural, why would all nations come against a little nation? Well, we're seeing it. It wasn't only what happened in Israel, what happened around the world after it, this is exactly what the Bible says has to happen. And we are in that time. It's not a matter of opinion. It's fact. It's there. It's absolutely right. Uh, James Gall, sure. you told me the most important word you've just received, the hottest, if you will. Uh, and, and this ties in exactly with what we're right. dealing with. The whole thing about what God's doing in Israel is for the great harvest. You told yeah. me about the lightnings of God. What did yeah. you mean? You know, we have the three great feasts. The one feast that has not been fully fulfilled is the Feast of Tabernacles or the Feast of Harvest. We have now crossed the threshold for the beginning of the greatest harvest that the world has ever seen. And this is for Jew and Gentile alike that I'm here to say that I have seen in dreams and visitations where what I believe in Job 36, 32, that the glory of God, you love the glory, said, the glory of God covers the hands of God. He sends it forth, or it's called the lightnings. I have been seeing the lightnings of God striking key people who carry Psalm 24, who can ascend the hill of the Lord, but those who are longing for that have pure hearts, and these lightnings of God strike people, they become demarcations, and they become the next fire carriers of power and purity, and become the next revival carriers unto awakening in Jesus' name. And I tell you what, it's going to touch Jerusalem as well in Jesus' name. Uh, I have to ask you, James. Yes. Uh, how can we put ourselves in the best position to be one of those people that will receive the lightning of God? Absolutely. Well, availability is always the best ability. So just as you even open your shows and you say, come, Holy Spirit. So why not right now say, come, Holy Spirit, here am I. That's what Isaiah said. That's what Moses said. That's what I say. That's what this audience needs to say right now, because it is not about who you are. It's about who he is. And so right now we say, we welcome the supernatural interventions and the lightnings of the glory of God to strike us, mark us. And we say we want to be fire carriers to make a difference in every place of culture, in every place, in Jesus, in Yeshua's great name. I, I'm doing yes. it right now. I'm doing yeah, it. Yeah, right now. May the lightnings of yeah. God come upon me. Come upon and may me. I be a fire carrier for the yes. great, greatest harvest the world has ever seen. Yes. For me. Okay, Jonathan Kahn, what is the yes. connection between what's happening in Israel uh -huh. and your book? the harbinger, and to the mystery 
behind Hamas, the mystery of Hamas. That sounds yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, this is being called Israel's 9-11. Now, now, those who know the harbinger, it's the mystery behind our 9-11, and that it links to a scripture, which is, which is Isaiah 9-10, which talks about a strike of the enemy and also, you know, beginning of warning and shaking. Um, and the thing is, the one-year Bible, which people know, every day it has a scripture appointed for the day. Yes. If you open up the mm -hmm. one-year Bible and you open up to that scripture, yeah. Isaiah 9, 10, the Harbinger scripture, on top of the page, you'll see a date. It's September 11th. That came out years before 9-11, but every day, on every time on, on a, uh, September 11th, that scripture of the attack was there. Now, there's another scripture that was appointed for that same day on, on, on that same uh, page of the Bible. Yeah. And it's Psalm 55, and it speaks about destruction and death in the city. Yeah. And the word that it uses in Hebrew is an amazing word because it's yeah. also an Arabic word. In Arabic, it means fanaticism and fervor. But in Hebrew, it means evil, death, and destruction. And that Hebrew word is Hamas. And oh. that word appears in the Bible several places. It says in Ezekiel, it says Hamas has risen up as a rod of evil. It says, the land is full of bloody crimes and the city yes. is full of Hamas. It says, O Lord, in the Psalms, O Lord, keep me, O Lord, from the man of Hamas who has planned my overthrow. And finally, in Ezekiel 46, listen to this. It says, thus says the Lord God, let it suffice you, O leaders of Israel, remove Hamas. Wow. My goodness, I think we should stop, no. <laughs> In Psalm 83, 4, it says, a loud, bellicose cry is coming. What is that bellicose cry? Be right back. Why did the Jewish scripture say God will blind the eyes of Jewish people to Messiah because of sin? When will this curse of blindness be lifted? Jesus said, when Jerusalem is back in Jewish ownership. So in 1967, when Jewish people took repossession of Jerusalem, thousands of Jewish people like me started believing in Jesus as Messiah. We Jews have not had full disclosure. The rabbis only teach part of our Jewish scriptures. They claim there will be peace on earth only when Messiah comes. Since there's no peace, Messiah could not have come. But when we read the intentionally ignored parts of these same scriptures, we learn Messiah must come first to die and pay the penalty for our sins, then rise from the dead, ascend to heaven, and return a second time. One Messiah for all people, the Jew, Jesus, then comes true peace on earth. But first, peace begins one person at a time. What would happen if you planted the good news in the heart of every Jewish person that resulted in a harvest? I'll tell you what would happen, the return of the king. This is the set moment to favor Israel. Were you not moved by feelings? Were moved by the words of the living God. The spiritual scales are off of the eyes of Jewish people. We are going to usher in the salvation of Israel. I see entire cities in Israel being swept to the Lord. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Thou shalt prosper. We now return to It's Supernatural. Uh, now, James oh, yeah. Cole, you say Psalm 83 hasn't yes. happened yet, but it emphasizes verses that are tied to this war and into Absolutely. Hamas today. As a yeah. preface, Psalm 83, verse 3 and 4 says, they lay crafty schemes against your people and consult together against your hidden and precious ones. They Absolutely. have said, come and let us wipe them out as a nation. Let the name of Israel be in remembrance no more. No more. Where have we heard that before? Hmm. Yes, and what people must know is that those lines are in the top two lines of Hamas's 
charter. Really? Listen, I've gone and done the research just like Jonathan has. And those very words of Psalm 83, verses 3 through 5, are in Hamas's charter that Israel be wiped off the face of the earth and be remembered no more. Now, it follows then in Psalm 83 in the following verses, and it gives an entire list of geographical entities. In verses 5 through 8, how every nation in the region, watch this, except Egypt. Now, in this list, there is not Germany. Gog and Magog is not listed. So this is not about World War II. And it is not about, then, the War of Independence. But so what war is this? It's a regional war that has never happened in history before. One of the names that's in here is Philistia. Hmm. Where's Philistia? Another one of the names that's in here is in southern Lebanon. Well, what is that? It's Tyre, southern Lebanon. And then there's others that I could take the time to go through. Well, where's Philistia? It's the Gaza Strip. Hmm. And then in this list, Tyre is the southern Lebanon. Amman, central Jordan, Amalek is the Sinai Desert, Assyria, Syria, and Iraq. This group of entities has never historically ever been brought before. Psalm 83 is now happening. Read your Bible. Well, Psalm 83, 4 states yes. a loud cry. Yes. What yes. is it? Is it being sounded today? Come, let us destroy them as a nation, yes. that the name of Israel be remembered no more. This is exactly where we are in history. The old, ancient, malevolent gods yes. have yes. reappeared. And I have been prophesying the ancient malevolent spirits are arising. And that's what's happening right now. And so we are not to be ignorant, Paul the Apostle said, of the devil's schemes. And so let's be alert because behind this dark mal this dark war against Israel are these ancient malevolent spirits. Uh, Jonathan, what does this war have to do with the enemy, in particular, spiritual warfare? Hmm, well, I think this is really flowing together here, because I want to speak about one of the things that, that is actually at work right now. You know, when Daniel was praying yes. uh, for the, the future of Israel, you know, and, and Israel in the last days, and an angel comes and says, I'm here to tell you about the last days and your people. He says, yes. but I was stopped, and I was stopped by a principality, yes. which in, in Hebrew is Sar Paris. Well, what is this principality that stopped the angel or tried to for, regarding the last days of Israel, the purposes of God? It's Sar Paris. Paris means Persia. And so we know what Persia is. Persia is Iran. And so yes. it, now, now spirits yes. don't die. So you, it means to be translated right. ruler of Iran. Now, when you look behind all this, you see Hamas, but behind Hamas is Persia is Iran, the spirit of the same spirit that is spoken of in Daniel that concerning Israel in the last day. So it's amazing. But now behind all of this is another yes. spirit, and that's the spirit of Hasatan in Hebrew. We call him Satan. And you see, when you look yes. at all this, why is the what this was so satanic? Why is it that the world still after 4,000 years, here we are in yes. 2023, is has this demonic 
uh, a mission to destroy Israel. Well, not just there, but all around the world. You know, we yes. have demonstrations in New York. You know, yes. most uh, young Americans are for Hamas. You know, yeah. it's crazy, but you know what? It's not crazy because the Bible says it's not rational. It's from en- ancient times till now. That is the enemy has been trying to stop the Jewish people from existing because he knows right. that mm-hmm. through them are com- is coming the kingdom, came Messiah, right. and all the purposes right. of God. Well, That's Jonathan, right. you said that what's happening now is the replaying of an ancient mystery in modern times. What does this mean to you? Yeah, well, this gets even more specific when we talk about the the, the warfare. Um, and that is, you know, this whole thing is, you know, Palestine, Palestine, free Palestine. Yeah. Well, Palestine, yeah. the word, for those who don't know, Palestine was never the name of that land. Palestine right. is is comes from the word Philistine, Philistine. So Palestine literally means the land of the Philistines. The word Palestinian literally means Philistine. And so here you have the, the, the war that Israel had throughout yeah. the ancient time. It was always Philistines, Philistines, Philistines. Well, you have a people, and listen, we pray for everybody, but the people are called by their own name is called Philistine or the land of the Philistines. And where was the headquarters of that war of the Philistines? It was Gaza. Gaza. Yeah. Not only Gaza Strip, Gaza City, they planned attacks. Yeah. So the whole thing is replaying before our eyes. What the Bible said is true, and anybody watching, any Jewish person with any open mind, and many are seeking now, you got to say, there's got to be something here. Seek it, and you'll find it. it yes. It's like I say on secular TV often, I have irrefutable proof that Jesus is not just the Jewish Messiah, but he's the Messiah of all of the nations, the Gentiles. He's the Messiah of the whole world. How in the world could you ever have peace on earth with uh, a God for the Muslims, a God for the Christians, a God for the Jews, a God for the gods, for the Hindus? No, one God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, one Messiah, the Jew, Yeshua. And I want to lead you in a prayer right now, and I want you to repeat this after me. Dear God, I've made many mistakes in my life, for which I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus washes me clean. And now that I'm clean, Messiah Jesus, come and live inside of me. I make you not just the savior of my sins and cleansing me, but I make you my Lord. Amen. Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, in closing, what is the good news in this, and what does it have to do with a prophecy that very few people know from the book of Jeremiah. Yeah, well, well, God said to Jeremiah, right after he spoke about the new covenant, he said, as long as the stars are in heaven and the sun is in the sky, as long as this fixed order is there, the children of Israel will not cease from being a nation. So here he said that. Now, the amazing thing that everything we're watching is not just the attacks on Israel, but the fact that there is an Israel. After 4,000 years, all the nations that tried to destroy them are gone. The Hittites are gone. The Jebusites are gone. Uh, all that's gone, but the nation of Israel lives because the God of Israel lives, and if he's your God, you're going to live and you're going to prevail. That's the amazing thing, that Israel even exists. The other thing is, remember, Jesus, when he looked over Jerusalem, he wept and he said, yes. your peace is hidden from you now. And so for 2,000 years, the Jewish people have been seeking peace, but they don't have it without their shepherd. They're the, they're the sheep without the shepherd. But but the Bible says when all this is happening and all the nations come and all that's happening, Israel will turn to their Messiah and yes. they will look upon him and they will receive yes. him. Yes. And then the kingdom will come to the entire earth. And then yes. the lion will lay down with the lamb and then peace will come not only to Israel, but the entire world. Yeah. James Gall, I want to know what is the greatest fulfillment of biblical prophecy in modern times and the key to spiritual awakening in the entire Middle East, and what does this have to do with Messiah and the salvation of Israel? The return of the second diaspora of the Jewish people scattered across the four corners of the earth and seeing this being fulfilled some of us be with our own eye this is about god saying my word is true and this is the 
only group of people who have been scattered to the four corners of the earth. And he's brought them and bringing them back. And their language was preserved. Their culture was preserved. The Bible says this, though. When they return, it's not, it's when they return that the scales come off their eyes. And then they behold that Jesus, the Messiah, is their God. I want to say that we are living in the greatest days of seeing prophecy being fulfilled. And right now, Psalm 83, wake up, folks. Psalm 83 is being fulfilled right now before our eyes. And that leads to some more prophecies that will be fulfilled also in Jesus' name. I don't know about you, but I'm on the edge of my seat because we are seeing with our very eyes biblical prophecy being fulfilled. 